is. He's awesome. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. There's none like him. There's none like him. Amen. He's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we love you. You are awesome. Everything to us, Lord. Everything we need, you are to us, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We just thank you for our gathering. We're, we're blessed and we're privileged. Lord, to be able to go to the house of worship. To come out of our respective homes and to make our way to the house of worship. Bless your holy name. Lord God, to, to gather ourselves together and bless the Lord. To lift up holy hands and lift hearts unto the Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. To bless the Lord at all times. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege. You gave us the strength, Lord. You kept us last night, Lord. We don't want to take these blessings for granted because they, they happen so often. But it's the Lord that keeps us safe. Lord God, we had nothing to do while we slept, Lord God. You watched over us. We had nothing to do with that. It's all your goodness and mercy. We just thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Time would not permit us, Lord. We just we need a special service just for thanking you for all your loving kindness, all your blessed tender mercies, mercy after mercy, goodness after goodness. Bless your holy name, Lord. We just thank you, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, we ask that you just continue to be our guest of honor. Lord, you know what we all have in need, what we stand in need of. You know what we need, Lord. We just thank you now, Lord. We just thank the Lord, our God, because you're faithful, Lord. Our God is faithful. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We leave this place, Lord, without a care because it's all in your hands, Lord. We take no, no honor to ourselves, Lord. We're not keeping ourselves. Lord, we're not making ourselves stronger. We're not doing those, those necessary things, Lord God, that only God can do. You're doing all that for us, Lord. You said it's God that works in us both to will and to do. We thank you for the will to do, Lord. We ask for help, God, and you send help. Bless your holy name. Lord, we honor you. Be with us throughout this day. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Our hearts and our souls say thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Truly, it's the Lord, as the scripture says, God works in us the mind, and he gives us uh, the, the will, he gives us the empowerment to do what's right in his sight. He, both, he works in us both to will and to do. Amen. That ability comes from him. We just thank him. All we do, the scripture says, we just come boldly to the throne of grace. Oh, just, just avail yourselves, saints, and stay before the Lord. And you'll see him working in your life. Praise the Lord. We just thank God for our, our gathering together. I, I just personally want to thank you all for praying for me. Um, it was stormy weather a few weeks ago. And uh, you only need to know one thing in the storm. Is the Lord with you? That, that's all you need to know. You don't know how he's going to do it, how he's going to bring you out, whether it be by his hand, whether it be the doctors, all that. None of that matters except, is he with me? That, that's, that's what we need to, to just rest in that, that fact that God is with his people. And he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And stormy weather comes, it comes into the life of all whether you're saved or not. 
the storms of life will come. But Jesus said, the wise man is one who hears my words and do accordingly and build your house upon the rock and the foundation of his word. Surely you will stand when the storms come. Though it beat upon your house, though it beats upon your faith, we don't worry about the natural storm so much, but the storm that comes against your faith and tries to silence you. When we know God has been everything to us, yet the enemy is relentless and he constantly comes to silence your praise. Oh, when he comes to beat upon the house of faith that God has put within you. Praise God. We can just rest in the fact that the Lord is faithful. And we just rest in his words. This is what a wise man does. He, he takes the word of the Lord and he rests upon what God says. What did the Lord, all I need to know, what did the Lord say? And I'm good with that, praise the Lord. But I want to thank you for your prayers. I thank you for uh, your well wishes and the cards I received from, from some of you. And the packages that I received to help sustain me during that time. <laughs> Thank God for everyone that, that's good to his, his people. Praise the Lord. And those who do those things, you do it for other people. I know, you do it for all. So we just thank God for the, for the, the household of faith. Amen. The Bible tells us to, to, to do good to all men, but especially to them of the household of faith. Especially your brothers and sisters who are pressing this same way with you who are calling on the Lord just as you are. Praise the Lord. Do good to them. Amen. But we just thank the Lord. I, I'm, 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 I'm just thankful to be standing here. I'm, I'm thankful for a generous portion. I borrowed that term a long time ago from the pastor, but I heard him pray that about 30 years ago. Lord, thank you for a generous portion of help. I've been saying it ever since. <laughs> I, I said good portion, but I said generous sounds better to me. Amen. <laughs> Give me a generous portion of health and strength that I'm able to do for myself. I'm able to, to carry my own load. I'm able to walk and, and to, without the assistance of anything, praise the Lord, the goodness of God. And you all know, you've all been, to, to some degree, you've had an illness or sickness that put you down, and you can give God praise to say, you know it was the Lord that brought you through, Amen. Amen. The Bible says that Peter's mother-in-law had a fever. How many of you had fevers? Just shows you how much the Lord cares. He said he, Jesus got up and laid his hands on Peter's mother-in-law and the fever, rebuked the fever and left and she got up and started serving him. Got up and started cooking for him. So we just think God is just, oh, just so good in so many ways. Oh, he doesn't leave a stone unturned. He, that, that, that's why Jesus made mention of that that the very hairs on your head, he knows how many. You think he doesn't pay attention to small things and small details in your life. Oh, God don't really care about this or that. Oh, you'd be surprised what the Lord cares about. That's why Jesus said that the very hairs, you don't even know how many hairs on your head, but he knows how many hairs. Shows you that he's concerned about every detail of your life. Praise the Lord. So we just thank God for all that he's doing and We'll be taking our, uh, starting with Romans, the uh, 15th chapter. We'll be taking our, our text from there. Romans is called the, the Constitution of Christianity because it's so complete and thorough and it deals with just about every aspect of, 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 of doctrine that you can imagine. It deals with everything. And one of the things that it, it deals with, um, it makes it clear that God is, has preordained that salvation comes to mankind through Jesus Christ. It makes it clear. Paul said that I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Being a very learned man, a scholar, 
uh, being a Pharisee of Pharisees of the tribe of Benjamin, a very learned man. Uh, usually learned people scoff at things that are supposed to be supernatural or things they can't explain. They usually turn a, turn, a, turn a nose up at things that can't be explained because man has relied so much on his intellect. He thinks that that's the way to explain everything. But God is far beyond intellect. Oh, the, the writer of Hebrews told us that we understand by faith that God spoke the worlds into existence. We understand by faith. We, we, we can't comprehend how God did this. The power of his word. That's why the gospel goes out in word. And from that, it springboards into everything else. From the gospel, God brings salvation. As it's, the song says, he's awesome. Deliverance. Deliverance. Provider, restorer, healer. I am the Lord that healeth you. Praise God. So everything we need is found in the gospel. The 15th chapter of Romans. I'll be cutting into a somewhat of a narrative. Okay, I'm going to start from I'll start from the 22nd verse and I may go back over some of these but I'll, I'll start from the 22nd Romans 15 22nd verse for which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you this is the Apostle Paul addressing the Roman church but now having no more place in these parts, having a great desire these many years to come unto you. Whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey and to be brought on my way forward by you. If first I be somewhat filled with your company, but now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. For it has pleased them of Macedonia and Acacia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. It has pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty also to minister unto them in carnal things. When therefore I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I will come by way, I will come by you unto Spain rather. And I'm sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. For now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me, that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in, Jude in Judea, and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God, and may with you be refreshed. Now the God of peace be with you. Amen. 29th verse is our verse of focus. I am sure that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. And the Apostle Paul here is speaking of the, the fullness of the blessing. You know, you can never get too much of the Lord. You can never get too much. The Bible says to be filled with the Spirit. It means to just keep yourself filled up. 
So the Apostle Paul is saying to the saints, I'm going to come to you, but first I must stop off at Jerusalem and to minister there. You know, the saints have been taking care of one another down through the centuries, amen? He said, for it has pleased them of Arcasia and Macedonia. These were Gentiles that were prosperous and God touched their hearts to be a blessing to their brethren that were poor. See, it's no crime, it's no sin to be poor. Jesus said, you always have the poor. There's all, you, we know poor people, you know. I, I, I'm not sure whether any of you would classify yourself as poor. Uh -huh. But we know people that have less than us, amen? amen? And we know that there's people that we can often be a blessing to. So this was a, 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 a custom of the Holy Spirit that started when the church was in its infancy. Take care of one another. The Bible says that the, the Spirit of God moved on them when the church, I use the term first started because it's, 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 it's simpler that way to understand what I'm saying. After the Holy Spirit came on the church, because what did Jesus tell his disciples to do? To wait for the promise of the Father. To tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. So, when you're waiting for God to give you further instruction, you just wait. You don't know what they're going to be until the Lord comes, amen? You don't know what that instruction is going to be. But part of that instruction was ministering to people, healing the sick. This was the ministry that the Lord gave to the church. As they went out and preached the gospel, uh, people were saved and healed. And they were delivered from all sorts of things. And along with that ministry of deliverance and breaking of yokes and tearing down a stronghold, it was a ministry of benevolence that came along with this. People still need to eat. The devil is cast out, but now the man is hungry. Feed the people. And he's talking about natural things. He didn't make it deep. Okay, we, need, we have a natural man, amen, and we have a spiritual man, and they both need attention. So this ministry of benevolence started early in the church, a giving to those who don't have, giving to those who had less. And the Bible said that the move was so great that they began to take their, 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 uh, their they would sell their possessions, some would sell their homes, I'm sure they had another home to live in. But they, they seemed like the church was getting rid of excess. I don't need two homes, but there's somebody that needs a home. Now, I'm not suggesting you give a home away, you know. Just, you know, just listen to me. But I live in one home, and yet I have another home that's just sitting there, and yet there's somebody hungry. I could take this money and feed multitudes. That's exactly what the church did. The Bible says, and they came and laid it at the apostles' feet. And no man said that this is his anymore. Once he sold it, it was the Lord's now. It belonged to the Lord. So the, this ministry of, of benevolence and giving started a long time ago. So Paul is telling the church also that I'm, I'm going to stop by and see you on my way to Spain. But first, I have to stop in Jerusalem. So here's a man who is speaking of the fullness of the blessing because, you know, we, we live in a day and time, saints, where we have to do whatever we can to keep the fires burning. Amen? Because the world will put, you, put out your light. The world will put out your light. So we have to stoke the flames. Amen? Fan the flames, whatever it takes to just keep that fire going. Sometimes it just takes a little fan, that's all. You don't even have to add more fuel on it. Sometimes it's just a renewed prayer life. Oh, a, re a renewed commitment. And that, that, that puts more uh, uh, 
sometimes you just need a, 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 a holy wind <laughs> just to fan that flame within you. Yeah. Praise God. And then it's, it's, you have to ignite it all over again. So Paul speaks about the fullness. This man lived in this kind of spiritual environment. Or he was, he was overwhelmed with this, this spiritual fullness because he lived in the blessing of the gospel. And this man said that for the gospel's sake, I give everything up. Lord has to deal with us. Surely we, we don't have a whole lot if you look at what we have that we may be, but we, we have something that we can give up, amen? It may not be such in material, in a material sense, but God may be just telling you, just look. Cut down on the TV. God may be telling you that. Over in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, it says that let us lay aside the weights, the weights and the sin that so easily derails us. Because weights can do it too. Weight, weight is not a sin. But a weight comes when you do too much of something that's not spiritual. Can you say amen? amen. You're doing too much of something that, that doesn't, it doesn't satisfy or minister to the soul. The spiritual man is left starving and um, the, the carnal man uh, is lazy. Because after you've eaten and done all you want to do with the carnal man, the next thing for you to do is just go to sleep. Now, now stay with me. I, kind of stay with me now. The carnal man, which has his own agenda, doesn't want anything to do with God. We've got to realize that this is a part of us. This is what Jesus saves us from. And I say saves us because it's every day you need to be saved from yourself. Your name is written in heaven. Yes, it is. Your name is written in heaven. But you still need to be saved from yourself. Uh, because self will destroy you quicker than the devil. Like I said, it has its own agenda. When Adam gave up his will, he surrendered his will to a lie. When God came and said to God, well, excuse me, when Satan came and said to Adam or said to Eve, did God really say that? And so what the devil loves to do is take the truth and spin it, distort it. See, a lie is not always a direct uh, uh, opposition to the truth. It's not always direct opposition. It's very subtle. And the master of the lie, Jesus said he was the father of the lie. Back when nothing but truth existed. As Jesus said, the glory that I had with the Father before the world was. Nothing but righteousness and truth existed way back in eternity past. We have to use that term because we don't know how to describe those different timelines. So we say eternity past. And Jesus said that, that Father glorify me with the, with the glory I had with you before the world was. We don't know anything about that except only what Jesus says. But way back then, there was one that God had given so much power and authority to that he felt himself worthy to be worshipped. And the Bible makes it clear that it's talking about Lucifer, the son of the morning, how he was corrupted. The Bible says because of his beauty and because of his wisdom. That God made him, you read about that in Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, and Isaiah, the 13th chapter, the metaphors of, of Satan. And it's, one of them says that because of your beauty and your wisdom, you were corrupted. And he lifted up himself and exalted himself. And he 
was the father of the lie. I don't know what he sold the angels on, but one third of them believed it. And one third of them received damnation because they believed a lie. So we know that the enemy we're dealing with is very, very persuasive. Very persuasive, and that's why we, we have to do everything the Word tells us to do. The Word says to, to lay aside the weights. Well, I just like doing that. It makes me happy. But it also goes back and says, lay aside the weights and the sin. Now, we all know what sin is. Nobody has to define sin for you. We all had or have a besetting sin, something that we have, to, we have to stay away from certain things. We have to avoid certain things. Now, with, with, with women, I don't basically know what, what those things are, but with men, I know that we're more visual than women. And so the enemy could easily affect us with watching something that we shouldn't because that's just, just the nature of men. God even made a provision in the Old Testament for men. And God says when you overtake a land and you, the captives of the land come under your control, when you see a beautiful woman and you desire to have her, God even gave them an order on how to do that. Don't take her, but give her 30 days to mourn for her land mourn for her country, and mourn for her father's house. Then after that, she may be your wife. The scripture starts out by saying, if you see a beautiful woman, then you may have her. You wonder why the kings of the Old Testament had so many wives? Because God allowed that. That's what God allowed at that day and time. But when the Pharisees came to Jesus, Jesus always goes back to the way things supposed to be. Moses, he said, because of the hardness of your heart, he allowed you to, to put away your wives and to have another. But Jesus said from the beginning it wasn't so. When he made male and female, he made them Adam and he made Eve, and these two are to be one. And that was the way it was supposed to be for a lifetime. Never divorce was in, in God's mind. But Moses allowed it because it uses the term hardness of your heart. But what it was is because men, it's, it's, we, because grace hasn't come. Grace hasn't come yet. And it's better to uh, take people out of a troublesome situation rather than make them stay. So Moses allowed for there to be divorce. But Jesus, under grace, Jesus said, no, no, it's, it's not that way. We're under grace. And grace is the help of God in doing everything we're supposed to do. It's God's help in everything. Well, well, that's, 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 God helps. Yes, he does. God is a, is a great help in marriage. He's a great counselor. In fact, Peter the, tells us the third chapter tells a woman how to win her husband without even preaching the word. It just says, just, just carry yourself in a meek and humble way. That without the word, they may be one. As they behold your, your meek conversation, coupled with fear, just, just be reverent to that man. And by and by, the Spirit of God will win his heart, and that man will be saved. Without you even mentioning, Jesus saves. Years ago, it was a deacon that lived around the corner from the pastor when he lived in, in uh, Jersey. And we used to go around and visit him. And he was an example of that. That was his testimony. He said he was out here living and said his wife had gotten saved and was going to church. 
and she never preached to him. But she always had, I don't, I don't remember his name. Yeah. yeah. But she always had his meal ready. She always had his clothes clean. And after a while, that went on for a while. I don't remember how long. He said after a while, that just began to melt his heart. And he had, hmm? His name was John. Yeah, yeah. That was, and he was a deacon in his church. Uh, he became a deacon, rather. <laughs> but um, his, his wife's conduct was so meek and humble, and no matter what he did, she was right there at his side. I'm not talking about sin or anything like that, but no matter how he treated her or he spoke to her, that takes some humility, saints. That, I'm, I'm not telling you that that's easy to do, by no means. But this is his testimony. He said, my wife won me without even mentioning God, but I saw God in her. So when we, we talk about the, the fullness of the blessing, it's, it's the, the idea of Christ being seen in you, not so much being heard. Paul said, when I come to you, I come to you in the fullness of the blessing. And that's everything that you possibly could need, God has supplied it for you. You're coming in the fullness. Saints, how wonderful it would be for us to just live in the fullness of that blessing, to walk as a spiritual man. Not two hours spiritual and 22 hours carnal, but to live as a spiritual man, praise God. Only the Lord can teach us how to do this. Let's read Matthew, the 25th chapter. We can relate to the words of Jesus. And Jesus always spoke on a level in which people could understand him. Matthew, the 25th chapter. And I mentioned earlier about uh, we have to do whatever we can do to keep that fire burning in us, keep the light glowing, amen. Matthew 25 and 1. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I don't know you. And Jesus said, Watch therefore. For you know neither the day nor the hour where the Son of Man cometh. And this parable is just to cause us to be vigilant and alert. Because if you're not ready, you're going to miss out. You're going to miss the Lord's coming if you're not ready. So Jesus speaks of of the wise and the foolish virgins, how that half the church, he said the kingdom of, of heaven shall be like unto ten virgins. Now, this is the summation, or this is the summarization of, of all the kingdom of heaven. Everybody that's here on earth that claims the name of Jesus. Jesus said that I'm going to divide. Five were wise. So there are people who, who have named the name of Jesus, who have promise that they would serve him and devote themselves to him but nevertheless 
they didn't do the wise thing. And then there were five who, who made the promise of commitment to the Lord. That, Lord, I'll, I'll go where you lead me. I'll deny myself. And they lived up to it. And that's why Jesus said five were wise and five were foolish. Five took what was necessary. So saints, we, we only need to take what's necessary for this journey. That's what the Bible says, to get, get rid of the weights. There, there are things that are just weigh you down and slow you down and maybe even derail you. And what happened? What was, what was the, the, the conclusion of it all was that the, those that did not prepare themselves, if you don't prepare yourself, you're not going to be ready. And that prep time, we've heard many messages coming from this pulpit concerning what to do with the word of God and with yourself. And how Jesus made it clear that you cannot even be my disciple unless you deny yourself. The, the, our salvation is, is, is premised and based on rejection of your own self, but reception of the will of God. Receive the will of what is God, uh, what is his will for you? And God's will is not complicated. It's not something that you, 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 you have to have someone to, to break it down and to, uh, to, to give you a, a, a lesson on how to serve God. Jesus made it clear. He spoke to the multitudes that followed him. And the Bible says he turned to them and said, if any man will come after me, because there were many coming after him after they saw his good works, after they heard the gospel, after their souls were blessed and delivered, and after they, they, were, they were filled with food, after the Lord healed the soul, then he gave the, the natural man satisfaction, and filled his belly with good stuff. And so after this, they followed him. Who wouldn't follow him? Who wouldn't follow one that could bless your soul, keep you peaceful, keep you from the storm, and, and keep your mind from being troubled? Who wouldn't follow? And also give you a good meal. So Jesus looked at those same people that he blessed and ministered to. And he said, well, there's a little more to this. He said, I've done what I'm supposed to do. I've done what a compassionate shepherd would do. I fed the flock. That's what a compassionate shepherd would do. But then I expect in return, this is what you have to do. You've got to take some responsibility in serving me. You can't just, just lay back and just allow God to, to lavish all his goodness upon you and you are irresponsible. You don't even take time to, to say thank you. It does not work that way. So Jesus said that if you follow me, and I am the good shepherd, I give my life for the sheep. I know how to, to comfort you in any circumstance. Who wouldn't follow a shepherd like that? I know when to anoint your head with oil. I know when to, to run your cup over. Goodness and mercy following you. He said that uh, in the valley, sometimes the shepherd has to lead the flock through treacherous terrain. Oh, wolves and bears, all types of predators. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the death is nothing but a shadow away from me, but the good shepherd is out front leading his precious flock, leading us. And so David could say, though I walk, because David led many sheep through those treacherous territories. He knew what he was talking about. He said, but though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't even fear evil because God is with me. His rod and his staff comforts me. Oh, the Lord knows how to, to get us back in line. You think that God is is, is doing something to hurt you. But when God has to correct us, correction hurts. 
Many of you had to correct your children. You know what I'm talking about. Correction hurts, but it's a benefit that will bless them throughout their life. They corrected me when I was wrong. Chastisement is not always pleasant, but it's a benefit. I was glad when I grew up and had my own, uh, Joyce and I, we got married and we had our children. We were able to instill in our children those principles and those teachings that were passed on to us. Oh, you know, it's, it's, it's a benefit. And then when you, you, you see all your labor that you pour into them, and when they come to fruition or they, they, they're grown up, you can see them bearing fruit now. You can see them walking in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I, I no longer have to preach to Vincent and Crystal and Roger. I don't have to preach to them. Joyce, we don't have to preach to them. But the fruit of our labor, the bringing them to church and to Sunday school and teaching them just simple principles to say thank you, that's not right, go back and apologize. Simple things like principles of integrity locked into their souls and now they are their own person now serving the Lord. So sometimes God has to take us aside and, and deal with us, but it's always in love. But let me get back to fanning the flames, the wise and the foolish. We don't want to be in that foolish group. It's inevitable. And I don't like to say it like that as though it must happen because it doesn't have to happen. But the Bible says five were wise and five were foolish. There are going to be some foolish saints that will miss out because they don't do what's necessary to keep themselves ready. You got to keep yourself prepared. And so when the bridegroom called, they said, give us of your oil because our lamps are going out. Soon as he called, they lit, it was gone because they didn't have any oil to feed that flame. So we see that we must be wise. It's not hard to be wise, is it? Did Jesus give us a commandment or something to do that's almost impossible? No. What did he say? He that heareth my word and doeth them shall be like unto what? A wise man who built his house upon a rock. And so when the storms came and the the winds blew against it. That house stood. Oh, because of the foundation. Saints, our foundation. There's no other foundation that can be laid. Some leave the church, maybe because they didn't have a strong enough hold on Christ, but they leave Jesus expecting to find peace somewhere else. And Jesus said, I'm the, I'm the prince of peace. There is no God besides me. Oh, there is no hope besides me. And Peter and the disciples learned this early. They said, Lord, you have the words of eternal life. There's no one else talking about a heaven and a kingdom and a place where we can, where we can be eternally secure with God. Who else is talking about a place where I can rest and abide with God? I can see his glory no need for the sun because the glory of the Father and of the Lamb shall lighten the city. And we shall walk in his peace and not be troubled ever again. No sickness, no pain, no sorrow. I don't hear anybody else, I don't hear any other religion coming close to that. Can't touch that. The God who made the heavens and the earth, oh, bless his holy name. That's the God we serve. Oh, saints, and sometimes we, we can't verbally express it, but we can just live it. Uh, I, I, got, I got lost for words one time talking to this Muslim brother, and I just, uh, I just, I just had to resort to what the scripture, I tried, to, I tried to modify it because we know people don't understand spiritual things, but I just had to let it go raw, like, 
what the scripture says. If you believe on Jesus, like the scripture has said, out of your belly shall flow living, living water. Rivers of water flow out of you. Life flows out of you. Oh, Jesus, just the woman at the well just tried to get her to see when he asked her to give him some water. And she said, how, you being a Jew, he asked me, we don't have no dealings with you. Jesus said, oh, if you only knew who's asking you and the gift of God, the gift that I have. Oh, my goodness, if you only knew. Oh, he said that, 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 that you, I would, it would be in you a well of living water springing up into everlasting life. Oh, his words, and to receive his, 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 his word into your life and to receive what he has done for you. Oh, it will be everlasting life, saints. We don't need to look anywhere else. There's no more peace to look for because all the peace is found in Christ Jesus. There's nothing else to look for. Thank you, Lord. Five being wise and five foolish. Saints. We want to we wanna be along in the number of the wise. Amen? I want to be wise. May not uh, have uh, degrees of higher learning, but the Bible says that a wise man is one who, who fears the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning. So we thank God for all that he's done and we thank God for all he's doing and thank God for different ones of you. Who just, you just feel it, it, the, 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 the flame flickering and you just, you, you, you're going into Bible studies and group studies and you're having prayer sessions with different groups. Saints, this is the day and time to, to keep, to keep the fanning the flames. Oh, we don't, we don't want our, our lamps to go out. Oh, we, we don't want our lamps to go out. The word says that, that his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We don't want the word of God to be ineffective in us sitting all these years under the word and then somehow Oh, by neglect or folly, we miss the calling when the Lord calls for the saints. Some saints are going to miss that. They're just not going to be ready when the Lord calls. But you want to be ready, amen? You want to read it. So whatever it takes to keep the fire burning in you, do it, saints. It's not as hard as you think. And I'm going to close out with this, this uh uh, it's a verse from a song that Sister Chelsea sings. The moment I heard this song, I said, it's, God is calling us. Amen. She could tell you the name. I don't know the name of it. It says, Spirit, lead me. This is just one verse of it. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the water wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. Oh, just talk, you just want the Lord, Lord, I'm giving you permission to just sanctify me, cleanse me, prune me. A pruning process hurts because God's got to cut away things that we are strongly attached to. But those things mean us no good. So that's why a gardener has to prune and has to weed his, his garden every so often. Things that will take away from the vitality that's supplied. Pruning process is necessary. Spirit, take me. Lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. That's what we want. Wherever God will call us, saints. We want something that we've never had before. Amen? That's what the fullness of the blessing is all about. We can get full. We've, if you've never been full of God, he's there waiting. We can get filled and full of God. And the Apostle Paul learned this secret early, being humbled and broken, that he realized that when I'm weak, then I am strong. 
Otherwise, God's just got me all, never worried about a thing. Here's a man that's been beat with whips five times, with rods three times. Here's a man who's been stoned and left for dead. His, his trust is only in God Almighty. Oh, he, he doesn't care about the natural world. Nothing the natural world can do to phase him. His hope and trust is in the Lord. Once the Lord has taken us through, the Bible says after you suffered a while, after you suffered a while. So we got to suffer a little, saints. Uh, don't, don't be upset with God because he allows a little suffering to come in. Because we all have to be molded, molded and shaped uh, after his will. Amen? After his will, he will shape you according to his will. And that process is usually done with some pain. Amen? Uh, as as, as Reverend Thompson was preaching that, uh, and others have preached too, that uh, on the mountaintop, uh, it's, it's easy to live on the mountaintop where all the blessings are just flowing upon you. But when the Lord has to take you down into the valley where you don't see the sunlight and it's kind of cool and chilly down there and you, you don't have the proper light to see what's coming up on you, your trust has to be beyond yourself. That's why I says, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Oh, take me further, Lord God. Only the Spirit of God can take us out there, saints. Oh, Lord, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. See, that's a relationship. Oh, as we read the Scripture, as we pray, our relationship grows. And that's all we want. We just we want a tight relationship with the Lord. Amen. I want to be so close, so close to the Lord that he can just, just speak a word and my heart will just be encouraged. That's how we want to live, saints. So we just thank God for his goodness and mercy. That's all I, I'm going to say at this time because I can go on and on. Some things you, you, you can, with a theme, you can just go on and on. But praise the Lord, let us all stand and just worship the Lord for his goodness. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Oh, bless your holy name. Oh, it's the power of God unto salvation. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Man is still trying to figure out how did all this start? Still trying to figure out. So it goes back to the Big Bang Theory. Still trying to figure out how all this started. I mean, it's just so easy. Lord God. In the beginning, God. God. In the beginning. Thank you, Jesus. God made it. It's easy to live by faith than it is by intellect. Because you'll never be able to explain or define everything. The Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. So we just thank you, Lord God Almighty. Those who are seeking a closer walk with the Lord, those who are online watching us, you want to open your heart to the Lord. But this is the day and time in which the Lord is, is receiving new souls, yes, but he's also calling his people into the fullness. The Lord is calling us into the fullness of the blessing. Oh, yes, Lord God Almighty. You're on the right path and you're doing the right things. Just want you to know, I want to encourage you along the way. Oh, uh, the Bible says if we draw nigh unto God, what will happen? He'll draw nigh unto us. Oh, we, we make steps towards him. He makes steps towards us. Oh, uh, this, is, this is something that we, we have to, to really want. God is no one to, to just be negligent or to take for granted. He said, I'm a great God. And my eyes roam to and fro 
throughout the whole earth, seeking to show myself strong in the behalf of those whose hearts are perfect toward me. I'm looking for somebody who loves me. I'm looking for somebody who wants me, just want me, and I'll come and sup with you. I'll reveal myself to you. That's all God wants. I want you to enter into what I have for you, the fullness of the blessing of the gospel. For the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. That's why I told the disciples and told Timothy, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed. I don't care uh, how intellects make it seem as though we, we've lost our minds. We know the power that touched us. We know the spirit that converted us. Well, I don't want to do what I used to do. That's how I know he lives in me. Don't want to do it anymore. How you know God is real? Because I don't do what I used to do. I'm not supposed to get too excited. I would tell you a little more, but I don't want to scare you. Because I did feel a little something. So maybe I better temper it down. But, but who wouldn't serve a God? He's given us the witness. We have the witness within ourselves that we have been changed. Oh, as we call on him. Bless the Lord. The altar is open. And I'm on the altar myself because I'm, I'm, I see what God is doing with our young folk. There's young folk in this church that, that's getting a taste of the reality of his presence. Oh, and, and it feels good. Oh, you know, sometimes people can't be converted just by words. Sometimes the enemy just snatches the word, but, but let a life lead you. Let the Holy Spirit live through you. The fullness of the blessing of Christ. Let the Spirit of God, oh, just, just move on you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Do a work in us, Lord God Almighty. Oh, do a work in us, Lord God Almighty. Oh, Lord God, as we, we we trim down our lives, Lord, as we, we lay aside the weights. Help us, Lord. Give us the power to lay aside the weights. Those things that, that hinder us and slow us down. They mean us no good. Help us, Lord God. Help us to lay aside the weights and the sin that derails us. Sin will just come in and derail us. Leave us out of place. Leave us derailed. But we thank you, Lord God, that there's a remedy for sin. And there's a remedy, Lord God, for those who say, I can't help it. There's a remedy. We thank you, Lord, that we can come to you in prayer. You said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Lord, we thank you that we can rest in Jesus. Lord, continue to grow us, Lord. Oh, Lord God, take us beyond our own understanding. For we know there's more in Christ. Oh, Lord God Almighty, there's revival then beyond revivals. Oh, Lord God, help us to live beyond, beyond the revival, Lord God Almighty. Live in the revival, Lord God. Oh, Lord God Almighty, we just ask in Jesus' blessed name. We just thank you, Lord. We just come here to thank you, Lord. We just come here to thank you, Lord, and to just present ourselves, asking you to have your way, Lord. But no way is better than your way. Father, in Jesus' precious name, in the midnight hour, oh, Lord, early in the morning, Lord God, call your children unto you. Oh, Lord God, as you, as you called Samuel when he was a little boy, Lord, call your children let them hear feel the hear the voice of God calling them into prayer oh as you've done with us Lord they can we can hear the voice in our spirit get up and pray oh Lord God Almighty pray for your children 
Pray for your household. Oh, Lord God Almighty, we thank you, Lord God, that we can early, Lord God, as your spirit wakes us and stirs us. Oh, we can get up and pray for the needs of others. Oh, bless your holy name. Remember that mother, Lord God Almighty. Oh, Lord God Almighty, who, who wants to come, Lord God Almighty. Oh, but for some reason, hindered, oh, Lord God, by the enemy. Lord God Almighty. Excuses, Lord God. As the enemy throws out so many excuses, frivolous excuses, but nevertheless, we're captive by, his ex by the excuses, Lord. Lord, we ask that you break that stronghold. Break that stronghold, Lord God Almighty. Oh, Lord, let the people come forth giving you the praise. Father, we ask in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, for bringing our Sister Sherry through her operation, her procedure successfully, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, to see her this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord John. Lord God Almighty. Lord, we just say, we thank you, Lord. Our hearts and souls love you. Lord, we just want to love the Lord beyond this service, beyond this day, the love of God that constrains us. Oh, hallelujah. When we're in an environment of sin, when we're in an environment of ungodliness, oh, let the love of God constrain us. Oh, Lord, give us power to walk away. Give us power not to look back. Oh, Lord, there's nothing back there for us. We don't even want to look back, Lord. Oh, Lord, now we, we understand why you told wife, Lot's wife not to look back because there's nothing back there for us. Oh, bless your holy name, Lord. Oh, but our eyes are, are forward. Our eyes are upon you, Lord God Almighty. Oh, take us out, Lord God Almighty. And lead us, Lord God Almighty where you, you can sustain us. Father, in Jesus' precious name we pray. And others that have come for a healing touch, Lord, we ask, Lord God Almighty, that you give them a touch. In Jesus' precious name, our hearts and souls say thank you. Our hearts and souls say amen. <laughs>
I enjoy when you're around a lot. So it's like, come on in, take a seat. I made room for you and 